How you doing guys, BC90 here with uh, the next video in my Poise series uh, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than my Poise Showcase. Uh, this particular uh, little side series here is separate to my Poise Showcase series which focuses solely on uh, you know, Poise in Dark Souls 3. Uh, I did mention at the start of my series and also in the description to this channel that I'd also be doing videos with Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. Um, and I had to start a new game in Dark Souls 1 after downloading it uh, when it came with Dark Souls 3. Uh, mainly because uh, when I had the Prepare to Die edition for uh, you know the old 360, uh, it didn't carry over my game files over to this version when it finished downloading. I guess because for some stupid reason this version uh, you know doesn't come with the DLC, the you know arguably the best DLC in the series, which is stupid. So I just started a new game, and I'm going to call this particular uh, side series the Road to Poise. So basically what this series is going to look at is my hardships in this uh, first game in order to create a poise monster as it was originally in Dark Souls 1. So obviously we're looking to equip full Havels, get a Wolf's Ring and have that base poise up to 161. Grabbing the legendary Zweihander, uh, the Ring of Favor and Protection as well, uh, which are also essentials. Now, look, I'm not looking to make a giant dad build, no. I'm just looking to make a Havel monster with a Zweihander that can take advantage of maximum poise in this game. Um, so, first things first, I've killed quite a lot of skeletons here in this graveyard so far, and uh, I'm pretty sure you can get the Zweihander from here from memory. So, we're just going to be looking for it, basically, and killing more skeletons in the process. Now, obviously, because this is an older game, the mechanics are a little bit less refined, so, you know... And I'm really early in the game as well, so I kind of look like shit, to be honest. Um, but, you know, just quickly, before we keep exploring, um, as you can see, my stats here, I'm at level 41. Uh, my vitality is at 22, my endurance is at 22, my strength is at 26. And I'm looking really to, you know, upgrade or put levels or points into those three stats. Now, Dexterity, I only leveled up once uh, to be able to use the short bow, um, you know, so I can snipe some enemies from afar and draw them towards me, which is a classic old tactic. So I won't be putting any more points into Dexterity unless I have to. Otherwise, I'll be focused on getting, you know, over 40 vitality, at least 40 endurance, and 66 strength. Um, and obviously, you know, the equipment that I mentioned earlier on. So we'll aim for that eventually, uh, and you know we'll see how we go. Now I might put a couple of points into resistance as well. You know, maybe up to 15, which I think was like the the only noticeable cap that resistance had, uh, where you could see a minor bonus to your defenses. Uh, I guess so. I may increase that. Like a lot of people may think uh, or have the opinion that resistance in this game is one of those luxury stats that you only really put points in if you've got points to spare. So we're going to end up being at... Uh, yeah boy, there we go, there is the uh, Bass Cannon. Uh, we are aiming to put points in, um, you know, enough points around to get to soul level 125, hopefully focusing on strength and poise in this game. Um, but, you know, if I have the points to spare, I'll chuck a couple in resistances, see what happens. Let's go see what's over there, but let's see if we can wield the legendary Bass Cannon now. And yes, I did go and grab the Drake Sword earlier because I'm a noob and I wanted it early game so I could uh, grind through it a lot quicker. Because, honestly, I don't have time <laughs> to be grinding like crazy in this game. Um, now, if you can see there... Okay, so my equipment load is actually 26.1 out of 62, so that's awesome. Uh, at least using this particular armor, I can roll um, normally while using the legendary Zweihander. So there we go. Step one done. That is awesome. Maybe we can go test this out. Now, step two. Now, I can't quite remember. I'm pretty sure you have to kill Lautrec in this game in order to get the Ring of the Ring of Favor and Protection. But I don't. I don't quite remember at what stage. I'm pretty sure you can just get the Ring uh, anytime you kill him. And he appears in the Undead Parish, and then, uh, gee, where else does he appear later? I think he appears later on in Anor Londo, where uh, you can actually invade him. I remember you had to invade him and um, kill two of his cronies as well. Um, so we'll see if we can actually go and find him here in the Undead Parish. And if he hasn't, then we're not going to be able to get the Ring of Favor and Protection until later in the game, unfortunately. But that's alright, because you actually find Havel's armor at Anor Londo, funnily enough. 
So, you know, we might be able to get those two key items in Anor Londo at the same time later down the track. And the Wolf Ring, I'm pretty sure you get from the um, the forest or the garden area, the dark, dark root garden. So, oh, look at that. Yeah, the Bass Cannon in its original iteration. Oh. So uh, once I do get this character to soul level 125 with the stats that I briefly explained before, uh, you know, uh, you know, when I get this uh, as a Havel Poise Monster later down the track. Obviously, I'm going to be looking to do some PvP videos. So, um, I'm not quite sure what the activity is like for this game still in 2017. But from what I've been reading online, uh, this game does have a hardcore fan base that still follow it quite extensively. And from what I've read, play a lot of PvP. So hopefully, uh, you know, at Soul Level 125, I'll be able to get some awesome PvP videos um, with the original poise mechanics uh, from Dark Souls 1, which a lot of people are very fond of, so... I just have to get used to these uh, older mechanics, really. It's, to be honest, uh, in my personal opinion, it's a, a lot slower, um, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just have to get used to... Um, you know how this is. So, actually, uh, I'm just trying to remember, there probably might have been a better way to do this. After we pawn these shit fodder enemies, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Lots of backtracking in this game until you get used to the maps. Because I am pretty sure there was a shortcut um, in the Filing Shrine that takes you up to the Undead Parish, which is closer to the area where Lotrek was, or Lotrek's um, prison. So we'll quickly, we'll quickly see if we can storm down there, and if not, obviously we'll go the hard way, which is through all this crap fodder again. Um, no, no, this is the right way. So I apologize if I get lost consistently. Um, <laughs> it's mainly because I haven't played this game properly since, uh, you know, since it launched, uh, what, like five, six years ago or whatever. So I, I don't have the best memory in regards to where everything is or how to find everything or whatever. And I'm really just focused on finding the stuff that I personally need in order to make this poise build happen. So it's, I guess essentially it's a blind playthrough, you know, a blind 2017 playthrough. Yeah, maybe I should talk to these guys, can't be bothered, might talk to them later. So look, at least we have the first thing we need for this build, in my opinion, which is the legendary Bass Cannon. Okay, so past all this, past these priests over here, which sell miracles up these stairs. Hopefully I've unlocked the, um, the shortcut, have I? Yes, I have. Awesome. Alrighty, so this shortcut in Filing Shrine is accessed through the Undead Parish. Uh, when you actually go around the Undead Parish for, you know, those new Dark Souls 1 players. Um, uh, you go through the Undead Parish, get to this area in it. Um, and you'll find this little shortcut which will take you back down to Firelink Shrine. So there's the Undead Parish. So normally you would approach it from that direction over there um, and you'll find this little shortcut hiding for you or waiting for you there. So let's go up these stairs. Might have a shield. Yep, okay. Look at that. Even one-handed, you can't resist the power of the Bass Cannon. Ah, crap. So yeah, I apologize. My skills are still, um, you know, in progress with this game because it's been so long since I've played it. But, uh, you know, I'm enjoying it. I am definitely enjoying it. I'm getting a lot of nostalgia just playing through these areas again. Uh, you know, when I first played this, I was um, still in university in my bachelor's or my, you know, my undergrad degree. And shit, I played this all the time. 
put some solid hours into this back in the day. Look at that. Oh, crap. Poorly timed there. Oh, poorly timed again. Get some breathing room here. Get our stamina back there. Alrighty, so hopefully Lautrec is still here. Um, I don't remember rescuing him. So I, I, but I'm not... Something behind me? No. But I'm not 100% sure if he's uh, still around. Now I have skipped some bits in this game, obviously, because you know the beginning of it arguably has a lot of uh, you know trial and error and a lot of grind. So this isn't actually a walkthrough or a playthrough. I'm just calling it the road to poise because I'm going to be focusing on you know the areas or the situations I need to get past in order to create this poise build, and this is one of them. Obviously, going through those skeletons to get the bass cannon, and now hopefully we can find Latrec up here. So Ah, uh, why is he not in here? I must have done some sort of sequence of events in some particular order to have him disappear from there. Uh, which sucks, because I think that means now, I, I forgot to check, but I'm pretty sure that means he's killed the Firekeeper at Firelink Shrine, uh, which sucks. So this means that I'm going to have to go find him in an Orlando. Anyways, uh, you know, I might wrap up this video, little video here. It's just to introduce this side series for Dark Souls 1, where we will be, uh, you know, aiming to create a poise monster, or an original poise monster, as I like to call. Um, now, I'll, I'll, as I said, I'll focus on, you know, separate videos in separate uh, areas where I'm dealing with specific challenges that uh, detail, you know, uh, you know, uh, me getting the items that I need to create this poise build. So, you know, stay tuned if you, you know, you enjoy Dark Souls 1 and you want to see me slowly create a poise monster and then get into the heavy PvP, uh, pay attention to this little side series. Now, if you're enjoying this uh, and my other content on this channel, hit the like button uh, or please subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for watching.